Are you all, are you all doing? I, I, I hear some people are tired, right? Yeah. Uh, what, about, what about everyone else? Tired, excited? You're going to, okay. I, I can try to keep it, can I try to keep this brief as possible. You know, you don't uh, know, like, how many times, like, uh, uh, when, I, when I, I preach before, like, sometimes, like, I think, I feel like people, like, in the pews feel like they, they that I can't see them. You say, I, I see you closing your eyes there. But I'm just going to assume that you're, you're, you're praying over there or something like that. But it, it's okay. If you guys need to rest your eyes uh, and, and listen, that, that's fine. I won't be, I won't be offended by, by that. But anyway, so uh, today, this is going to be our last message that we have, like, in, in the sermon series for, like, a faithful service. Um, I want to first, like, ask uh, you all, like, what is, what is something that makes you guys very joyful or something that gives you happiness in this, in this life? Just, uh, so for those of you who are online, I, we probably can't hear you, but if you put, can put your uh, answers in the chat, then, like, Alex will, uh, will, will monitor it. So what, what, what is something that keeps you guys uh, uh, joyful or make you guys ha- happy? Food. food yeah food food makes you happy what else if you <laughs> it's okay <laughs> friends vacation yeah friends uh, vacation seeing other people yeah. like that like passing that hard hard class right or getting to college that's uh, your, your top choice i'm um, thomas did you get in your top choice? No, but I got a few uh, like a college that we're happy with. So that was pretty expensive. That's good. Good music. Good music. So I think like we all can agree that's like usually like usually like a joy uh, is something that we try to seek for in this life. You try to find like this satisfaction. But as you know, like uh, like a lot of times like, that joy doesn't usually last forever because we spend a lot of time like trying to get get something that we desire and then thinking that it will be able to satisfy us and uh, help us uh, be joyful and as soon as we get it we after a while it sort of like goes away and then we are on the search again trying to look for something else to try to satisfy us so it seems to be like that type of cycle so i don't know if you guys can uh, relate to that but uh, uh apparently like if we have jesus christ in our lives you know jesus is supposed to satisfy us uh, completely so like a lot of people who's looking for a uh, joy and satisfaction in this world like like without christ you know, they will always be on, on the search for it. So it would make sense that, like, you know, if we're Christians, if we're, we are believers in Jesus Christ, then we should have this joy in our life. We should have this lasting joy. And, like, so how come, like, there are times when we still feel unsatisfied, that we still don't feel joyful at all? You know, if Jesus is supposed to satisfy us completely, have you guys ever wondered that? Uh, but... And I think a lot of it has to do with our attitude in terms of how we see Jesus and in terms of how we serve him as uh, well. So uh, like I said, like this is going to be the last message in our sermon series called Faithful Service. Uh, we're going through like uh, different like passages in the Bible to help us see the importance of serving God. So I think probably one of the things that uh, may uh, like prevent us or uh, make us like not want to be able to serve uh, God as much is because we don't get that much joy or satisfaction out of it. So as we look in uh, today's passage, we'll be able to see the the solution for how we can have that joy, especially uh, when we are serving God. Uh, So if you guys uh, can uh, take out the Bibles, like uh, we got Bibles here, so maybe you can uh, pass it around. Uh, We're going to, you don't literally have to throw it, but uh, we're going to turn to the Gospel of Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, uh, verses 38 to 42. Do we have enough? Uh, yeah, we have if, enough. yeah, if there isn't enough, there should be more in the, uh, the cabinets right next to Alex. Luke chapter 10, 38 to 42. Uh, I'm going to be reading from the ESV, but uh, you guys, I believe, have the NIV translation. So it might be a little bit different, but uh, it should be fine. Luke chapter 10, uh, 38 to 42. Uh, please follow along as I read. Uh, Now as they, this is uh, Jesus and his disciples, went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house, and she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. Verse 41. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. 
But one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. Uh, this is the word of the Lord. Let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have this uh, time to be able to, uh, to worship you, to uh, look into your word, and uh, to be here for our uh, in-person uh, youth fellowship. And I pray that uh, you continue to teach us, especially uh, about having this joy and satisfaction in our life uh, when we serve you. Uh, maybe many of us right now, we are still trying to search for something. Maybe we feel unsatisfied. Uh, help us and remind us that you can be able to fill that hole in our hearts, that uh, we can be able to, uh, uh, to trust in you, that we can be able to find this joy in you alone, especially as we serve you. So I pray that you would teach us, Lord. We lift up these things in Jesus Christ's precious and holy name. Amen. All right, so from uh, this passage, we're going to be answering two main questions, all right? So if you'd like to take notes or uh, you can be able to write this down. First question that we're going to ask is, uh, when can we lose joy in serving Jesus? So basically, when are the times when we can lose joy in serving Jesus? And we see that there are three moments uh, when we uh, can lose joy when serving Jesus. Uh, and then the second question we're going to answer is, how can we actually experience joy and grace in serving Jesus. So the first question, when can we lose joy in serving Jesus? There's a three moments for that. And then the second question, how can we experience joy and grace in serving Jesus? So let's start with the first, pass, uh, the first question, when can we lose joy in serving Jesus? So I'll give you guys the first point right away, or the, the first moments when we may lose joy in serving Jesus. So number one, we can lose joy in serving Jesus when we are distracted with much serving. So we can lose joy in serving uh, when Jesus when we are distracted with much uh, serving. So uh, read uh, verse 40. It says, but Martha was distracted with much serving. So here in this context, we know, we see Jesus and the disciples, they were going through town and they went to Mary and Martha's house. And uh, you know, Jesus was this uh, uh, honored guest. So Martha, she's like saying, oh, I need to make sure that everything in the house is perfect. I need to pick uh, to, to cook the, the greatest meal and clean up everything. So usually like uh, you think about uh, whenever you have guests come to your home, what, what do your parents usually do? They probably make you wash the toilet or uh, make sure that uh, you, you clean up. Or sometimes you don't have enough time to clean up things. So you just roll everything into the, the closet. All right. So you can imagine like the hecticness that is uh, going on that Martha is uh, thinking about. Uh, so. Uh, so to, to, to Mary and Martha, you know, Jesus, he's like this big celebrity coming to their own home. So, I don't know, uh, what, what type of celebrity would you like to see come to, to your home? Who, I don't know, your, your favorite uh, music artist? Shout out, I, I want, I'm, I'm really interested in like who your favorite celebrities are. Uh, Kanye, Kanye West? Yeah. And give a private concert right into your, in your uh, backyard. So we're all set in with Kanye. Okay, let's do that. So let's say that Kanye comes to your house. What would you do? What would you react? Oh, you want to try to make, put on your, uh, your, your best self and try to get his uh, autograph. Don't be too weirded out because uh, sometimes uh, you can uh, make yourself look, look bad. Uh, so you're thinking about all these different things and you want to uh, make sure your, your crib looks, looks pretty good too, right? So imagine all the different things that you are, are going through in your uh, uh, just to try to get something set, especially if you're serving a guest who's coming to your, your house. But have you ever think about this? Like when it comes to serving Jesus, it's not just what we do in church, but every single thing that we do in this life should be seen as service to Jesus. Everything that we do in this life should be seen as service to Jesus. So in First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, it says, so whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Uh, and then also Colossians 3.17, whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So these two verses says that everything that we do should be seen as serving God, should be seen as worship. So it's not just the things that we do in a church, not just uh, the activities, but everything that we do. So you can think about how like often we may lose joy when we are thinking about uh, or doing all these uh, activities. Uh, whether it is studying, whether it's actually serving in, in, in church. So you see, this is exactly what is happening to, to Martha. 
know, Martha, she knows that Jesus is coming to uh, her home. So she's thinking, oh, I got to make sure that uh, everything in the kitchen is uh, working well. I got to cook the best meal, make sure that uh, everything is uh, clean, cleaned up. So in verse 40, it says, but Martha was distracted with much serving. So because she's so distracted with the serving part, that's why she didn't enjoy Jesus. That's why she didn't have joy in him. So uh, it's not wrong for us to like, necessarily like, uh, be involved and do all these service. But, and we may even have good intention when we serve him. Uh, but you know, Jesus wants us to focus on him. So think about this. When we are distracted with service, we are no longer serving Jesus. Rather, we uh, become a servant to the service. So I'll say again, like when we are distracted with much service, we are no longer really serving Jesus. We're actually serving the, the service. Uh, we can't serve two, two masters. We, it's either that we're serving God or we're serving ourselves or some other uh, purpose. So actually, for example, like, uh, to be quite honest, these past few days uh, has been very hectic for me, uh, particularly for trying to prepare for this uh, in-person uh, fellowship. Because in my mind, I was thinking, oh, I got to uh, clean up this room. You know, like uh, I had to rearrange all the rooms, get, get rid of the, 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 the trash, uh, just to make it look nice. Uh, we, someone donated a, a TV to us, so I got that set up. And then I was also trying to figure out how to uh, get all the, the, uh, the microphones are working. Uh, I had originally was trying to drive to different stores, like Best Buy, Target, uh, try to go to Radio Shack, but doesn't exist anymore, to try to find this auxiliary cable. But I'm looking for ones that has the, the three rings on either side, because that's one that can be used to connect directly from the sound system directly into the computer so that the people on Zoom can be able to have like a better quality. But uh, couldn't find the, 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 the cable and I end up using like a different like lapel mic. Uh, so, I mean, it, it's working for, for right now. Uh, and even like, no, Thomas can attest to you, but when you came here, uh, you're the first one here. What did you notice about me? You were kind of busy setting things up. Yeah, I didn't even say hi to you, right? Yeah. I, I was kind of mean, so I'm sorry about that. Uh, so. This is an example of like how I can be so distracted with much serving. And I, 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 I actually, I, I recently just like reflected on this and I realized I wasn't really having joy in you know, serving Jesus. So uh, I, I need to be able to recognize when I am distracted with all this serving and then turn back to, to Jesus in that. So uh, this is why uh, you know, in verse 41, let's see how Jesus responds to, to, uh, to Martha. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you're anxious and troubled about many things. So Jesus recognized that she was distracted with much service. But then look at Mary. On the other hand, she was focusing on Jesus. Why? Because she was sitting at Jesus' feet and listening to him teach. So again, like the first point, when can we lose joy in serving Jesus? We can lose joy in serving Jesus when we are distracted with much serving. So as we continue on, I believe that there is Something else, a second moment, second time when we can also lose joy in serving Jesus. So I'll, I'll, actually, I'll give you this point right away too. So the second point, we can lose joy in serving Jesus when we compare ourselves with others. So we can lose joy in Jesus, serving Jesus when we compare ourselves with others. So let's go back to verse 40 and let's see uh, Martha's uh, response or complaint. But Martha was distracted with much serving and she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? So she's asking Jesus, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Do you know what she's essentially doing? She's basically saying, look at me, I'm doing all this uh, work where while Mary is just sitting at your feet doing nothing at all. She's saying, I am doing much better than Mary. And actually, in fact, like uh, at this time, Women were supposed to be the ones who uh, were, were cooking and doing all the housework. And technically, they weren't allowed to be uh, learning the Torah and sitting at the feet of like a rabbi uh, during this, uh, these like biblical times. So technically, in the eyes of uh, Martha, you know, she was doing the, the right thing. She was better than Mary. So she was comparing herself with her sister. You know, I think a lot of times when we are serving at church or in different ministries, we can often have this sense of trying to compare ourselves with uh, one another. We can say, oh, look at me. I am in a higher position of leadership than, than you are. Oh, look at me. I am doing a lot more in church and what well, you're only serving in, in one ministry. Or uh, even when it comes to other things, you can say, oh, look at me. I have a higher education than you. Oh, look at me. I make more money and I give more money to the church. 
uh, look at me, I'm more knowledgeable about the Bible than you. I can memorize more verses uh, than you. So usually like, when we have this mindset, then like we definitely will lack this joy when it comes to serving Jesus because we're so focused on comparing ourselves with uh, one, one another. So this is a very dangerous thing. So, uh, and as a result, like we might find ourselves like getting involved in areas of service that uh, we don't really, uh, we aren't really called to, to be in because we're just doing it because we want to look better and we aren't really doing it for Jesus, but we're doing it for another purpose. We're doing it to serve ourselves or uh, try to compare ourselves with other people. So you may find yourself doing more and more when you shouldn't be, when you compare yourself. But on the other hand, you can also be doing less because you, you know that, oh, uh, I may not be as good as this person uh, in playing piano or in, uh, in leading a small group. So I think I'm not going to serve. So when we have this mindset of comparing ourselves with one another, I think we also can not serve at, at, at all. So think about this. When we compare ourselves uh, with others while serving, then we begin to seek satisfaction in ourselves rather than satisfaction in Jesus. So when we compare ourselves with others while serving, then we begin to seek satisfaction in ourselves rather than in Jesus. So we need to remind ourselves that you no, know, we're all in this together. We, we are all serving the same God. We are all sa- serving in unity. Uh, so rather than try to compare ourselves with others, like we should be happy when someone uh, does well in ministry and they're doing well and they're serving God as well. So we should be joyful whenever we see other people succeed in ministry. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 26. So this is, if one member suffers, then all suffers. If one member is honored, then all rejoice together. So we're all in this together. We're all part of the same body of Christ and we should try to please God. So while Martha was trying to compare herself with Mary and thinking she was doing better, well, Mary uh, was sitting at Jesus' feet and we can see that Jesus was pleased with Mary who was just sitting and listening to him teach. So again, the, the, our second point uh, we can lose joy in serving Jesus when we compare ourselves with others. So uh, next, I believe that there is a, a third point, a third time when we can lose joy when serving Jesus. So here's the third point. We can lose joy in serving Jesus when we try to become the master. We can lose joy in serving Jesus when we try to become the master. So let's see that uh, from uh, Martha's response again. So let's read verse 40. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. Tell her then to help me. What is Martha doing here? She's basically telling Jesus what to do. So in her anger about the situation, you know, she was very busy. She was doing all these things. And her sister, Mary, was just uh, sitting there. Martha was very angry and she really disrespected the honored guest. And she told Jesus what he should be doing. She, in a sense, became the master rather than serve the master. So again, like Jesus, he had allowed Mary to sit and listen to him teach, even though it wasn't customary for women to be in this position. But for, um, for Martha, she was distracted with much serving. She was comparing herself. And now she's just telling Jesus what to do. So think about this uh, statement. We will not have joy in serving when we are not satisfied in Jesus's way. So we will not have joy in serving when we're not satisfied with Jesus' way. Or also consider this, when the servant orders the master, then actually he or she becomes the master. When the servant orders the master, then he or she actually becomes the the master. So I know that there are times uh, uh, when I have to get my family to a place, actually, you know, even, even the, uh, uh, like this evening, uh, after dinner, I got my whole family into the car and then we were uh, driving uh, uh, here. So there, there are times like when you can think about uh, your family having to go on vacation or drive someplace. Uh, but if you are the one who's driving, what is like one thing that is like really annoying? Like, have you ever had like any backseat drivers? Like someone will tell you, oh, you should turn this way or you should go, go this way. Oh, you, you, you shouldn't take this highway. There's a lot of uh, traffic. It's really, really annoying to have a backseat uh, a driver just telling you where, where, where to go. So this is sort of, sort of the same illustration that is like painting a picture of like what um, Martha uh, was doing when she was telling Jesus, oh, you should tell Mary to come help me in, uh, to, to, to serve. 
and take care of all these uh, important things. So she was trying to become the driver. She's trying to become the actual uh, master. So when we serve in church, we, I think there are times when we feel like we want to be in control of things. We want, uh, we want things in ministry to go the way that we want it to, to be. But it's not wrong to ask God and to pray for God to bless our ministry, uh, to have, uh, oh, we want enough people to come here to fellowship. Uh, we want uh, more people to believe in Jesus. Uh, it's nothing, there's nothing wrong with asking God to, to bless us in that sense. But we become the master when we pray, sort of expecting and demanding that God has to uh, bring everything to the way that you want it to be. God, make sure that at least 50 people show up uh, to, to fellowship today, or make sure that uh, we have at least 10 people who come to believe in, in Jesus. So again, it's not wrong to ask God like to, to, to bless the ministry, but then if you demand and, and have that type of expression of Jesus, then you're becoming the, the, the master. So, I mean, the title of this message is like basically experiencing joy and grace in serving Jesus. So, so far, like we've talked about like how we can experience joy or like when are the times when we aren't experiencing joy, but then there's also grace that is involved because there is nothing that you can do that will make God love you any less. So no matter what the outcome is, no matter if you ever like failed in your eyes or even in God's eyes, your worth before God doesn't uh, change. And this is God's grace. Grace means that you receive something that you don't deserve and you didn't even earn it at, at all. So we receive this unconditional love for God. You know, after all, we receive salvation through Jesus' work on the cross as he paid the price uh, on the cross for our sins. So we need to be reminded about God's grace to us, and that actually affects the way that we will serve him. So this, this will help us experience this joy. So when we realize this, then our desire is not to be the master anymore and to demand God of, like telling, uh, of uh, saying that he should do things our way, but rather we want God's will to be done. So, so far, like up until now, uh, we'd answered the question, when can we lose joy in serving Jesus? So we talked about uh, we can lose joy in serving Jesus when we are distracted with much serving, when we compare ourselves with others, and then also when we try to become the, the master. So how can we actually experience this joy then? So this brings us to the, the second question. So how can we experience joy and grace in serving Jesus? So to answer this question, let's look at the example of Mary her, herself. Look at uh, verse 39. And she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. So sitting at the master's feet is basically the traditional position of a learning a disciple. So let's answer uh, the, the question. How can we experience joy and grace in serving Jesus? So to experience joy and grace in service, we need to return to Jesus's feet. To experience joy and grace in service, we need to return to Jesus' feet. Now, returning to Jesus' feet doesn't mean that we should just sit there and not do anything at all and be lazy. No, it doesn't mean any of that. But rather, returning to Jesus' feet should be seen as a prerequisite before serving Jesus. So going to Jesus' feet should be a prerequisite before getting up and acting and, and serving him. So it's sort of like, you know, how you have to take chemistry one as a prerequisite before going to uh, chemistry two. You can't just jump into chemistry two without chemistry one. So you need the prerequisites. So likewise, the prerequisite of serving Jesus is to go to his feet. So to do that, we need to remind ourselves about this uh, joy that we have in Jesus, his love for us and who he says he is. So as we go to Jesus' feet, it means that, you no, know, spend some time to read his word. Spend some time to pray to God and ask God to, to teach you because Building that relationship is necessary so that when you actually go out and, and serve him, you won't be distracted by the other things. You won't compare yourself with other people. You won't try to be the master and you can experience that joy in, in, in Jesus Christ. So this is a very uh, important. So how else can we go to uh, Jesus' feet? You know, uh, we, can, uh, we can do that even in the way that we serve, in the way that we interact. Like you said, everything that you do in this life is seen as a worship to, to God. So think about this. If we don't have joy while serving Jesus in our everyday lives, then it is a sign that we have lost our personal devotion. If we do not have joy in serving Jesus in our everyday life, then it's basically a sign that we have lost our personal devotion to him. 
How would you characterize your relationship with Jesus right now? Would you say that you lost your devotion to him? Would you need to think about going and returning to Jesus' feet uh, right now? You know, I think even for, for, for me, at times I find that I need to do that, to pray to him more, to go to his uh, word and, and, and read for it. So think about before doing anything, before going to class or before going to study, go to Jesus. Before you begin a long day of work, go to Jesus. Before you begin any ministry at church, go to Jesus. Before you do anything in this life, go to Jesus first as a prerequisite. So it's not necessarily that you have to do this, well, I guess actually every single time for anything. The, the point is that you should be going to Jesus and going to his feet in a continuous manual, in a continuous devotion to him. So you know, everything that we do in this life is worship to God. So if we should always prepare ourselves to worship God and to serve him and to do anything, then we should continuously have this devotion to him. So in the sense, we should have this constant joy and constant satisfaction in him that we had uh, talked about. Let's read uh, verse 41. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which should not be taken away from her. So Jesus says, says, one thing is necessary. So Mary has chosen the, this good portion. So basically the thing that is necessary is, again, going to Jesus. It's necessary to go to Jesus to build our relationship with him and to, to not be anxious or troubled and to be joyful. And then Jesus also said that what Mary has done is it's the good portion that will not be taken away from her. So it means that this is something that is eternal. There are many blessings, there's many joys that we can experience in this life, but eventually those things will pass away. The only thing that will remain is our relationship with Jesus, is our joy that we have in, in him. Your relationship with Jesus, your joy that, will, that you have in him should be eternal and will last forever, whereas the joy that we can find in every, anything else is only temporary. So having this mindset should be reflected in the joy that we have as we serve Jesus Christ. So uh, let's review everything that we've learned from our passage today here in uh, Luke chapter 10. So we answered two questions. So the first question, when can we lose joy in serving Jesus? There's three moments. We can lose joy in serving Jesus when we're distracted with much serving. Number two, when we compare ourselves with others. And then three, when we become the master. And then our second question, how can we experience this joy and grace in serving Jesus? And we can do so uh, as we return to Jesus' feet. So, uh, I mean, a few weeks ago, when we were looking at the parable of the talents in uh, Matthew chapter 25, uh, you know, the master in the parable said, well done, good and faithful servants, enter into the joy of your master. So we can find this joy and satisfaction as we serve our master, Jesus Christ. Uh, so uh, later on, uh, I'm going to be uh, sharing with you some opportunities about uh, serving in uh, student ministry teams. And uh, I want you guys to consider it this summer uh, before we uh, uh, start these uh, ministries in, uh, in, in September. So have this time to think and pray about whether God may be leading you to serve in one of these uh, ministries. And it will be uh, helpful, especially as we think about how we can find this joy in it. So uh, in the meantime, let's go to the Lord in, in prayer. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful again that we have this opportunity to learn from your word uh, about uh, how we can be able to have time to reflect about uh, the way that we serve you and the way that we do things in this life, Lord. Maybe, Lord, that we find that we aren't finding uh, joy in you. Uh, if that's the case, I pray that you help us to identify the issue and repent of it and turn back to you. Go back to your feet. Be in devotion uh, to you. Uh, Lord, I also pray that you would uh, give us uh, these uh, different opportunities to, to think about uh, how we can be able to serve you here in the church in, in the future and build that relationship with you as we're uh, doing so. And as uh, we're doing so, to also experience this joy of, uh, of you. So, uh, Father, I pray that you help us to reflect and uh, be with us as we go into our small groups to have this time to, uh, to pray and to uh, discuss with one another, Lord. We thank you. We lift up these things in Jesus Christ's precious and holy name. Amen.